Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we are going to dive deeper into the notion of router shelled routes. We are also going to continue the implementation of our course component that we started on previous lessons. So let's start at the beginning here at our application root component where we have here our top menu that we can see here on the HTML of the application root component in this toolbar. If we scroll down we are going to see that we have here our main router outlet. So this means that this menu and the central screen makes up for the skeleton of the application and then any other components are going to be displayed here in the central part of the screen below the top menu. If we check the application routing configuration, we are going to see that we have here a couple of components such as the login or the about component corresponding to different entries in our top menu. And we also have here a route named courses that is a lazy loaded route so the contents of this route is going to get loaded via the lazy loaded courses module this courses module also contains its own routing configuration the routes of the courses module are going to be child routes of this top level courses route if we check the courses module we're going to see that it also has its own routing configuration such as, for example, here the configuration for the home component and the course component. So all of these routes that belong to the courses module, which was lazy loaded, are child routes of the top level courses route. Now, in a very similar way to how the top level courses route might have a series of child routes, lazy loaded, the routes here on our courses routing configuration might also themselves have their own set of child routes. For example, let's take the case of the course component and let's display it here on the screen by clicking here on view course. This component here might also have its own series of child routes. We can imagine that in the particular case of the course component, the child routes would be displayed here on this section of the screen and we could uh, imagine for example a default route to be displayed here which would contain a lessons list containing all the lessons of the course and then whenever we click in one of the lessons we could display a different child route which would be a lesson detail component showing the lesson that we have just clicked. Let's configure a couple of child routes for the course component and let's take the examples that we have just discussed. So we are going to add here a new children property containing an array of child routes. So these child routes are not lazy loaded. Let's then start with the first child route of the course component. This route is going to target a particular lesson. So whenever we access here the lessons subpath and we access a given lesson, so let's add here a path variable that we're going to call the lesson sequence number, then in that case we want to display here on the central part of the course component a new component called lesson detail component. This component is already available here in our sample application and we are going to go over it in a moment. It's not yet fully ready but you already have at least some HTML and CSS. Besides this child route that should display here the detail for a particular lesson, we also want to display here a different route which is going to be the lessons list component. So this should be displayed at the same time of the course component whenever we access the course path. So here in this case we want to display a new component which is the lessons list component. Again it's a component that we already have available in our sample application that we are going to go over in future lessons. Right now the goal of this lesson is to understand how child routes work and how the router does its matching between a browser address and the different route components. Let's take a few concrete examples so that we understand how this works. I'm going to take this address that we have here in the browser URL bar and I'm going to paste it here inside this comment. So whenever the router sees a path like this, it knows via the application routing configuration that 
it needs to lower the courses module. This is a lazy loaded module. This is triggered by this particular prefix in the address. So as we can see inside the courses path, we also have here another path segment, which is the angular router course. This is going to match the course component. So the router knows at this point that it needs to lower the courses lazy loaded module, and then it needs to display the course component. Where will this component be displayed? It's going to be displayed in the top level router outlet of the application. So anything that matches the routing configuration of the courses module is going to be displayed here on the central part of the screen below the top menu of the application. And in our case, this means that our course component is going to be displayed here on the screen. And that is already the case. Now inside the course component, we are going to have a new router outlet. We are going to add it here below the course thumbnail. Let's then add here a new router outlet. Now inside the courses component, the router needs to determine what needs to be shown here inside this router outlet. And this is going to be done using the child routes configuration of the course component. So any router outlet in the template of the course component is going to be matched against the course component child routes. As we can see here, we are not adding anything extra to this address. So this would match the empty path. And this means that here below the course thumbnail and title, we would be displaying the lessons list component. Now, if we would type another address on the address bar, or if we would click in one of the lessons of the lessons list, we would have an address like slash lessons 17. And this would match to lesson 17 of the Angular router course. This would match this particular path here. And so here on this router outlet of the course component, and what I mean by that is this router outlet that we have just added, we would here then be displaying the lesson detail component as we have defined here on this child route. In the next few lessons, we're going to take care of the lessons list component and the lesson detail component that are not yet functional. But in all cases, I hope that this helps you understand how child routes work. So whenever the router receives an address such as this one, it's going to start matching routes from the top level URL segment. So whenever we get a match here with the course component, we are going to be displaying this component that we see here on the screen on the top level outlet at the level of our application root component. If this component that was matched is part of a route that has child routes, such as the case here of our course component, we are then going to use the remaining paths of the URL to match what child component needs to be displayed. This child component belonging to this child route is then going to be displayed on this router outlet that we see inside the template of the course component. This means going back to the address example that we have here, that this browser address resulted in the displaying of two components by the Angular router. The first component getting shown is the course component and the second component getting shown is the lesson detail component. The router outlets define where these matching components need to be added to our application. Now that we understand how child routes work, let's go ahead and make the lessons list component work. We are going to need to give it its own data. And for that, we're going to be using a new resolver. 